I think it's interesting to understand a bit better the energetics of our movement. So um, why do we need so much energy to uh, cycle in this case or to walk or run around? And uh, um, how are those energy requirements determined by the way we move? The American College of Sports Medicine provides an equation that helps uh, estimating your oxygen consumption when you're cycling on an exercise bike using an individual's weight and the power at which they're cycling. Independent of how rapidly the legs of this individual are spinning. What bikes generally, exercise bikes in the gyms can tell us is uh, how much energy we put into the bike to spin the wheel itself. What we can understand with the infrared cameras is how much energy we need to spin the legs. So in the study, we measured the energy requirements, the oxygen consumption of a group of 10 individuals cycling at different pedaling rates. And then we used the standard equation and looked at how accurately it estimated their energy requirement. And then we modified this equation, including the pedaling rate, and we observed that the accuracy in which we could estimate energy requirements improved. So by using the equation, you just need an exercise bike where uh, the power output at which you're cycling and uh, the uh, cadence is available. Uh, that can be measured just with a stopwatch. If you know your body weight, you get a sufficiently accurate estimate. The equation to estimate your oxygen consumption when you're cycling, 3.5, which is the amount of oxygen you use just to sit on the bike, uh, plus 10.8, which multiplies uh, the work rate, so the exercise intensity that you're using at the time, divided by your body, body weight, uh, plus uh, 0.00007 multiplied by cadence cubed.